Hello, and welcome to ArcGIS Field Maps, creating and using smart forms. My name is Doug Morgenthaler, and I'm joined today by my colleagues Jane Darbyshire and Aaron Pulver. So what are we going to cover today in this session? Well, we're going to give you an overview of smart forms in ArcGIS Field Maps and the Field Maps app itself. We're going to get in some demonstrations on how you can get started with smart forms. We're going to talk in a little more detail about some of the smart form capabilities that you can use to configure your forms. We'll dive into some more advanced workflows showcasing some of those capabilities. We'll talk about some tips and tricks and what's coming next. So smart forms in ArcGIS are available, are a new concept and are available as part of the ArcGIS system. That's a very important concept. They are available in multiple platforms and products. So today we're going to be talking about ArcGIS field maps, but certainly forms also come to life in other aspects and other apps and other parts of the platform. That might be uh, the new map viewer uh, also takes advantage of that, but you could write custom web apps using the JavaScript API. And also that's going to be extended to runtime apps and desktop apps in the future. It's also important to note that, again, this is a platform capability. So the, this is defined and as part of the web map specification. So it's really meant to be used throughout the platform so your forms can come to life in wherever you need them to be. So let's talk a little bit about ArcGIS field maps. You may or may not be familiar with field maps yet, but you may be more familiar with some of our previous mobile products where we had apps like Collector and Workforce and Explorer and Tracker that helped us navigate through the many activities that happen within a field operations uh, workflow. So again, planning, understanding, capturing, et cetera. So traditionally, we've had a series of apps that are designed to support each of those activities. The vision for ArcGIS Field Maps is that rather than relying on a series of apps to complete those workflows, ArcGIS Field Maps can be a single application that's used to complete those various stages that we've outlined. ArcGIS Field Maps is composed of two different apps, a web application to author, manage, and deploy maps to the field to support field operations, and a mobile app available on Android and iOS for mobile users to complete their tasks in the field. So let's take a deeper dive into the ArcGIS Field Maps web app. Who is this app designed for? It's really intended for use by GIS analysts or field supervisors, GIS administrators who are responsible today for creating and deploying maps to their field workforce offers a number of key capabilities. You can configure your maps properties. You can configure your content, layers, tables. That can be things like templates and well as forms, which we'll talk about in this session. It allows you to manage the offline experience, whether that map is available for offline use, create predefined offline areas. And then finally, once you're ready to go, easily share and deploy those maps to your mobile users. It's designed to simplify and aggregate many of the capabilities that folks who have been responsible for completing these tasks have done through various parts of the ArcGIS platform, now aggregating all of those into a single location so you can quickly and efficiently complete those workflows. There are some requirements. Of course, uh, the web application is already included as part of ArcGIS Online, and it's available as a separate install for ArcGIS Enterprise 1081 or higher, and it's embedded will be embedded natively in ArcGIS Enterprise 109. It is supported on a number of different well-known browsers, and it does require a certain set of privileges in order to access. So in this case, really the create privilege because you are creating and managing maps.
One of the key capabilities of ArcGIS field maps is the ability to create and use smart forms. Smart forms are a new way to create and edit attributes in ArcGIS. They are included in the web map specification, as we discussed earlier, and they're supported in other parts of the ArcGIS system. They're designed to simplify the field editing experience. You can design that experience in the field maps web app reordering fields, removing or adding information that they need. And it offers a number of key capabilities. You allowing groups to organize fields logically, providing conditional visibility to make sure that only relevant information is filled out, requiring certain information to be completed before it can be submitted, and streamlining the efficiency to minimize the amount of time spent out in the field completing a given form. These are just some of the capabilities that were, are available today, but there's much more to come. And with that, let's jump into a demonstration by Jane Derbyshire on how you can get started with smart forms. Jane? In this demo, I'll be showing the basics of how to access and create forms in the Field Maps web app, and I'll give a brief overview of how to create a form from a pop-up in an existing web map that contains an editable layer. Before I configure the form in the web app, let's see what a form based on the layer's editable pop-up looks like in the Field Maps mobile app. I've already logged into the app, and now I'll open my Vineyard data collection map and take a look at the form. Since this web map already has templates and a pop-up configured for the Vineyard layer, I can see three options. I'll choose In Progress. Here, we can see what the form looks like based on how the pop-up was configured in Map Viewer. However, if you want to take advantage of the new smart form capabilities, you need to add a new form to your layer that takes precedence over the editable pop-up. Let's jump over to the Field Maps web app and see how that's done. One note of caution before we start, if you configure the map using the Field Maps web app, you must use the new Map Viewer when editing the map. If you use Map Viewer Classic to edit your map, the changes you make in the Field Maps web app will be lost. Let's go through the steps to start configuring a form using the Field Maps web app. I've already signed into my organization in my browser, and now I'll open the app launcher and find the Field Maps web app. When you start the web app, you're presented with a list of the maps you own. I'm going to click on my Vineyard Data Collection map so I can create a form in it. This is the overview page for my map, where I can see additional information about the map and its contents. To create a form, I need to go to the content page where I can see if I have any editable layers. Forms can only be configured for maps that have editable layers, and I have three to choose from. I want to configure a form for the vineyard layer, so I'll click on that, which shows me the templates tab. To create a form, I need to switch to the form tab. Since the editable layer in my web map already has a pop-up configured, I don't want to repeat that work when I'm making a form. Alternatively, you can build the form from scratch using the fields listed on the right, There'll be more on that in Aaron's demo later. Creating a form based on the existing pop-up is as simple as clicking the blue Convert Pop-up button in the middle of the screen. Now, all the fields that were listed in the panel on the right side of the screen are displayed in my form, and I can now configure the form for use in the mobile app. First, I'm going to take a look at the form title. Vineyard is pretty good, but I'd like to make it a little more specific, so maybe I'll change the name to Vineyard Data by clicking on the form title to edit it. And again, maybe that's a little bit long. I'm going to undo that change and put it back to the way it was. So I hit the undo button. And if I'm feeling a little wishy-washy, I can always bring it back with the redo button. I can arrange the fields within the form by dragging and dropping them on a blue target rectangle. For example, vineyard name is down here. And I want the person filling out the form to enter that information first. So I'm going to drag it to the top of the form and drop it here. There are also a few fields in the pop-up that I don't want included in the form. I'm going to delete the Appalachian and Appalachian ID fields by hovering over each one and clicking on the trash can icon that appears. This warning is telling me that any property changes I may have made, like making the field required or changing the input type, won't be retained if I decide to drag the field back into the form. In this case, I'm going to confirm the deletion of both fields. Next, I want to check the properties of the certification field to see how it's set up. I won't make any changes now, but you'll learn more about these properties, along with how to group fields and adjust your form layout further in Aaron's demo. To get out of the properties and go back to the form builder, I'll close them. Last but not least, I need to save my changes. 
If I don't save the form, I lose everything I just did, all the way back to when I clicked the Convert pop-up button. On the other hand, maybe I don't want to save these changes. If that's the case, you can click on the drop-down arrow next to the Save icon to discard all the changes you've made since your last save, or you can even clear out the form entirely. If you forget to save your changes and you try to navigate to another page in the web app, you'll be given the option to continue editing so you can go back and save your work, or you can choose to lose it all by clicking Discard Changes. I want to save my work, so I'm going to opt to continue editing so I can save my form. There, saved. If you want to learn how to create this vineyard web map, Elvis Takao has a great ArcGIS blog article about collecting and managing vineyard data using the Vineyard Management Feature Layer template. Be sure to check it out. Thanks, Jane. That was a great demo. So Jane's demonstration gave you a really quick and great intro into how you can leverage the Field Maps web app and how you can get started with forms by converting your pop-up and how you can manipulate that form and define various properties and form elements. So let's take a look at some of the additional capabilities that you can use when authoring and configuring your forms. So first, you can use groups. Groups offer a way to organize fields in a logical fashion and provide a way to limit what you see at any one time. You can order and group the fields within the group as well as the groups themselves and provide, again, a logical order to ease the form entry experience. Of course, you can provide a name and description if needed. And you can also provide a and set the initial state for those groups. Maybe uh, the first group you might want to leave expanded because you expect them to enter that first and leave the subsequent groups beneath that uh, collapsed. And again, as uh, Jane showed, if you do uh, have uh, field elements that are defined in your pop-up, when you convert those into a, into a form, those do come over. So you've already partway through the authoring process. In addition, you can also apply conditional visibility. Forms can sometimes get very long, and some of the questions are relevant based on other form entry. So conditional visibility allows you to streamline that process by only showing certain fields when a given form entry value that they've entered previously indicates that that needs to be filled out. So you can think many examples around that. So that is done through Arcade Expressions. And when you define those expressions, you use uh, the ArcGIS Arcade Ex Constraint Profile, which basically your expression needs to evaluate to a Boolean value for true or false. And true being that the uh, field or group is visible or false that it's hidden. In addition to organizing and controlling visibility, you can also provide more context to help ease and streamline the form entry process. Part of the ways you can do that is by defining and including fields that are should be visible but not editable, so that you can make them read-only. Again, that provides some additional context that may help them in entering other aspects of the form that they need to do um, without actually directly interacting with uh, the read-only value. Second, uh, you can start defining that you want to require certain fields that need to be filled out before the form can be submitted. So this is obviously very important. Getting information from the field is, uh, is very expensive time-wise, and you want to make sure that when people are out there collecting that they know which information is essential when they're going out at, before they can submit a given form. And this is only uh, required when the field is visible. So when you tie required fields uh, to conditional visibility expressions, if the field is not visible, it is also not required. We did have an, uh, and still support the experience for having a field that is defined within the database as not nullable. Um, that is still valid, valid, and we still use that in terms of determining whether a field is required or not. But it is a much more uh, 
much less an elegant solution and not very flexible. There's other aspects that you can also include for your form elements that can provide more context to ease and streamline the form entry workflows. One of those things is a description. So the description can provide a more detailed, uh, maybe a couple of sentences indicating how this form is to be filled out. It may be how to take a certain measurement or what type of uh, information they need to consider when filling it out. And really it helps the user understand when they're filling out this form that they may or may not be that familiar with, how do they enter the information correctly. In addition, you can also specify a placeholder. A placeholder value allows you to provide a really short snippet if no value is present in the given field and give them a sense of what might be the format that they're looking for. Uh, that they need to enter that information into. So just a really quick at-a-glance view just to help them, again, guide them in creating and entering the right information. Another way to streamline your uh, mobile workflows when it comes to forms is defining input types. And input types effectively control how a particular field is used for data entry, what options it offers. So for example, if for a text field, you may choose to use a text box for something that may only be something like a first or last name, but you might wanna use a text area that supports word wrapping uh, if you're going to have something that's more free form, like a comment that might be several paragraphs long. Again, there's also options for dates and dates versus times, depending on the level of granularity that you want them to enter that information. We've also recently added support for uh, radio buttons. So for coded value domains on string or numeric fields, traditionally we've shown that as a combo box. But if you only have a few values, radio buttons a great option to consider. And again, the reason that you may want to consider some of these options is to just optimize the data entry flow. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Aaron Pulver, who's going to take us through a demonstration of simple data collection and configuration with SmartForms. Aaron? So this demo is going to be about simple data collection using smart forms. So in this example, I have a layer of trees and I want to start collecting new trees around my location. I'm going to go ahead and tap the collect button and update my point to this current location. I'm going to scroll the panel up so I can look at my full form here. Notice that there is a top section here called tree description. So this is a group. So there's multiple fields within this group starting off with the common name. I'm going to tap that, select Cortland. And you can notice the um, asterisks both in the group title and the field title that indicates that this is a required field and that in the group there is one or more required fields. For the genus I'm going to select malice and for the species uh, set that and then I'm going to say that today I planted this tree. For the status you can see this is also a required field and when I tap this I have three values to choose from. If I choose dead nothing appears below. But if I choose a live, you can actually see that there's a new set of attributes that I need to fill out. So I'm going to collapse that top group and look at these new three attributes to fill out. So I have age. Let's say that this tree is two years old that I transplanted. The diameter maybe is five feet and the height is also five feet. And just like that, my form is filled out and I can submit my record. So now let's jump back to the field maps web app and see what this form looks like there. And I'm going to walk through how you can build this form from scratch. So this is what it looks like right now. So you can see I have my description, I have my five fields, and I have a second group of physical attributes in those three fields as well. I'm going to go ahead and clear this entire form so that we can start from scratch. So in this case, I want to add a group to start. So I'm going to drag a group over. I can select this group and provide it a name. So in this example, I think we use tree description. 
And I also want to add a description for this group, which appears underneath the title. Um, let's say tree detailed information. Oops. Notice that there's an option here for initial state. So in my example, I want this group to be the first thing that's exposed because I know people are going to be filling out these attributes every time. So I'm going to leave that checked. I'm going to collapse this properties panel and now I have all these attributes over here. So I'm going to drag over the attributes that I want. So I want the common name, the genus, the species, the date planted, and then finally the status was my last field. So you might remember that the common name field, this was actually required. So I can open that and require that field. Similarly, the status field was also required. I'm going to select that and make that required as well. Next, I'm going to add my second group. But before I do that, I'm actually going to collapse this top one to give more space in the canvas. So I'm going to drag this group below, and in this case, name it physical attributes. And maybe I'll give this some description, um, like the height and age of the tree. Now, I also want this group to be extend, expanded by default because this group is going to be conditionally visible based on the status field. And so to do that, I'm going to add a new expression here. So I'm going to tap Add Expression, and this is going to launch the built-in Arcade Editor component. So in here, I have a list of fields and some other helper functions that I can use. So in this example form, I want this group to be displayed when the status field is equal to alive. So I'm going to set that. And I'm also going to give this a title, is alive. Click OK. And now this entire group is going to be conditionally visible or not. I'm going to clear that panel. And I'll add my three attributes to the form. So I'm going to add age, diameter, and height. And you might remember that all three of these are required. So I'm going to quickly go through and require all three of these. It's important to note that even though these are required, they're only required when they're visible in the form. For ex one last thing to note is that I might want to provide some additional context for my uh, field workers. So maybe I want to say use years for the age. So I'm going to update the display name. For diameter, I'm also going to set this to feet. And then finally for height, uh, maybe I don't want to change the display name, but I want to provide a hint. So this is actually going to be a placeholder text that appears inside here. So maybe in this case, uh, I want to put in feet as the placeholder text. I'm going to go ahead, click save, and now my form is ready for use. So I'm going to quickly jump back to the mobile app and show you that form that we just built. So I'm going to reload my map. Tap collect, and now you can see that form. So we have tree description. If we change the status to alive, we can see those three new fields that we just created. So this is one example showing how you can create forms or simple data collection for new features. In this next demo, I'm going to show how the new smartphone capabilities are a feature of the entire ArcGIS system. So we're looking at the same form that we just created, the form to collect trees. So you saw how that worked in the Field Maps mobile app. Well, I'm going to show how this works in the new Map Viewer app too. So if we go to the Overview tab in Field Maps web, there's an option to open in that viewer, in this case the beta app. I'm going to click that, and it's going to open my form, my map here with my trees layer. On the right-hand panel, you can see there's an Edit button. I'm going to click that, and I presented with two options. You can add a feature or edit a feature. So let's say we want to add a new tree. Let's say we want to add it here. You can see that I'm provided the same form. So I have my group with the tree description, and I can select one of the options for the common name, and select the genus and the species. Let's say I planted this tree today to 
2021. And let's say that the tree is still alive. So if I come down here, and you can see there's a list of physical attributes that I need to fill out. Let's say this tree is well, three years old, the diameter maybe is five feet, and the height is maybe eight feet. And just like that, I've completed my form. I'm going to go ahead and add, and now my new tree is added to the map. And this is possible because when you save the form in Field Maps Web, it is saving it into the web map. And so when you open that map in maps like the new map viewer or the iOS and Android Field Maps app, the form can be used for data collection. In this last demo, I'm going to be using the same data set of trees, but in this case, we're going to be focused on updating existing trees as well as performing an inspection report on the tree. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on one of these trees and open up the editable form here. At the top, notice that there's a tree description group. By default, I've chosen to collapse this group because most of the information here is purely contextual to help my field worker. I'm going to collapse that and move on to the actual attributes that I think should be updated. So I'm going to change the age from 5 to 6. I'm going to change the diameter from 6 to 7. And then finally, change the height from 9 to 10. I'm going to go ahead and submit this feature. I'm going to add a new related record. So you can see there's a completely new form here to fill out. In this case, there's some inspection info at the top. So I need to enter the date, and then I'm prompted to enter my name. Now I'm going to collapse this group and move on to the current tree description. So first, I need to enter what is the diameter of the tree? I think we said it was 6. What is the height of the tree? 7. And then finally, what is the status of this tree? In our case, it's live. And now, notice that there was a new question being asked. Does the tree have fruit? Yes, this tree does. And then I'm prompted, how much fruit? Let's say this has 100. I'm going to go ahead and collapse this group, and then finally move on to the maintenance section. So I expand this. You can see I'm prompted, does the tree need any maintenance? Yes, it does. Well, what type of maintenance does it need? In this case, it needs trimming. What is the level of effort to trim the tree? Let's say it's medium. And then finally, what is the priority of this maintenance? Let's say that it is high. So I could go ahead and submit my feature at this time. But let's change the type of maintenance from trimming to other. And you can see that the trimming related fields are now hidden and the values have actually been cleared. I'm now prompted to enter a description of the maintenance to be done. Let's say this tree needs to be fertilized. Tap done, and then submit my feature. So now let's move over to the FieldNaps web app and see how this form could be configured. So now this is the map that we were just looking at. I've selected the trees layer, and I have my first group, the tree description. So these are the attributes that were not editable. So if I click on one of these, you can see that allow mobile users to edit. It's been unchecked. If we collapse this group, you can see there's my physical attributes. And these are required and also editable. For my inspections, I can expand the tables accordion and select this form. And you can see here that there's an inspection info section top with two fields, one for the date and then one asking for my name. We scroll down, we can see there's a form or a group of the current tree description and there's the various questions that we went through. And finally at the bottom, there's the maintenance section. 
So in this form, I really want to focus on the maintenance section. So at the top, there's a question, does this tree need any maintenance? And this is always displayed. The next question down is, what type of maintenance? So let's examine the expression that's driving this. If you remember from the form, this question is only asked when requires maintenance is yes. And you can see that is expressed here in one line of arcade. It's using the domain name function, the current feature, and the requires maintenance field. And it's determining if that coded value is equal to yes. And if so, then this is displayed. If that field is displayed, then depending on the value of it, we may or may not display what is the level of effort to trim. So let's examine what that is. In here, we have another expression. This is using the domain name again, but it's checking the maintenance type. And if it is equal to trimming, then we're going to display this field. For the maintenance description, this was only displayed if the maintenance type was other. So let's examine what that expression looks like. So again, it's really one line of arcade and very similar to the other expressions. And for the last one, the maintenance priority, this was always displayed if any kind of maintenance was required. So let's see what this looks like. In here, again, we're using the domain name function and checking if the coded value is equal to yes. So that shows how you can use conditional logic with Arcade to make smarter, more efficient forms for improved data collection in the field. Thanks, Aaron. That was a great demo. So Aaron walked us through a lot of different aspects of form authoring there and how it comes to life on the mobile app. He took a look at groups and how you can manage the size and, the, and logically organize your form, talked about how you can use conditional visibility to provide access to just the type of information that is needed based on other entries. He also illustrated the use of required fields to ensure that the data that you need is coming back from your field work. In addition, he showed how you can use forms on layers as well as tables. So thinking about the inspection workflow, those tables are very important. And finally, he showcased how you can use smart forms in other parts of the ArcGIS platform. In his case, he showed it in the new Map Viewer. So wrapping up, let's talk a little bit about some considerations and best practices when working with forms. First, you want to test your form first and foremost before deploying it to your mobile workforce. That's particularly important for conditional logic. You can use one technique in the Arcade Expression Editor to test your conditional visibility expressions in the different options. You can use the global dollar feature variable and set those individual fields uh, to specific values to test and see how your expression evaluates while you're in the Expression Editor so you don't have to go to the mobile app to test that, although it's obviously a good idea to do so at the end. Another opportunity to streamline use of the form is considering the appropriate input type that you need for your field. For example, if I have a coded value domain with just two or three particular options, uh, I might want to use a radio button rather than a combo box because the radio button is more efficient and is right in line with the rest of the form so a, a user could quickly make a selection and move on to the next form element. And of course, you can provide guidance when you need to. Uh, we offer the ability to do something very simple in terms of a placeholder, just to provide guidance on a format, perhaps, for a form entry. But also, you can use a longer description if more information is needed to help your mobile user fill out that form effectively. And then finally, you can include other fields that you don't want them to edit and mark them as read-only, but are useful for context. So what's next for forms? We have a lot of work uh, that we've been doing and continue to make this a focus uh, for the next several months and into next year. But these are a few highlights of some of the areas that we're working on. First, we're looking at improving the experience for defining conditional visibility for a field or a group. Right now, you have to write an arcade expression to do that, which, while very powerful, isn't always 
as easy as doing something where you have a simple builder experience to define your expression. Second, we're also working on improving the ability to, to simplify the way data is collected by calculating fields based on other information that you might collect in the form. We're also looking at taking advantage of some of the ArcGIS platform capabilities that are coming in that further streamline field data collection workflows, such as contingent values and attribute rules. Those are areas that we'll be looking at later in the year. And with that, I think we're ready to go to Q&A. Again, please provide your feedback for the session by clicking on the link below. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our question and answer session. Um, I'm Jane. I'm the moderator, and I'm going to read out questions, and we'll go along and answer them um, as many as we have time for. I think our session ends at 11.15. If you have any additional questions for us, please feel free to put those over in the Field Apps Ask Our Experts Showcase area. Um, we'd be happy to answer them for you in great detail over there. Um, so for the first question, we've got, when should smart forms be used versus a Survey123 survey? And I'm going to throw that one to you, Doug. Thanks, Jane. So that's a great question in terms of, you know, there are a lot of overlap in terms of how, what capabilities are available within ArcGIS smart forms, but also within Survey123 forms. One major aspect that may help you decide which route to go is where do you expect to use these forms? For example, uh, ArcGIS smart forms not only are available in field maps, but they're also available today in the new map viewer. Uh, as well as within the JS API. So you can use those today in a number of different places. So if you've got office applications that you're building or using the map viewer for, those are things that those forms will immediately come to life in, in those areas today. And we expect those to come uh, to other parts of the ArcGIS platform, such as the Experience Builder in the future. Another uh, angle there is also just what capabilities do you need? Uh, currently, smart forms and Server123 forms do not have direct parity. So there are some capabilities that are in Survey123 today that you may want to consider. But, uh, and, and if they're necessary, that may send you down that route. But if there are other things that you need in terms of the map uh, or editing other layers and viewing other layers, that might be a, a reason to look at uh, field maps and forms uh, for your application. Great, thanks, Doug. All right, our next question is for Aaron, and that is, do you have plans to add webhook functionality to smart forms like in Survey123? Uh, thanks, Jane. Yeah, this is a great question. Um, we actually do have plans to build some tighter integrations with the hosted feature service layer webhooks that are available on ArcGIS Online today. Um, I'm actually showing a demo later today in the Road Ahead session uh, with Integromat. Um, which I would encourage you to, to watch that. And if you have specific requirements, questions, please reach out to the team. We'd love to get your feedback. Great, thanks, Aaron. All right, our next question is any support for or plans to support features like username and calculate question types, choice lists based on linked CSVs, Cascading selects, inbox, note fields, um, not linked to a field in the feature layer, feature reports, webhooks, lots of questions there. Doug, I'm gonna throw that one to you. There's a lot to unpack in that, uh, in that one question. That's a, there's a lot of material there. I guess there's a, there's a few areas that I'll, I'll just highlight out of, out of those, those asks. Uh, calculated fields is an area and, and looking from, from the poll perspective that is very uh, much uh, a requested feature and that is something that we're we're actively working on um, and and want to deliver that capability uh, here hopefully sometime later this year uh, in terms of things like the choice list based on csvs right now we don't have that in the in the roadmap but we are planning to support uh, contingent values which are available today in arcgis enterprise but are also coming to arcgis hosted feature services to allow you to have those dynamic lists uh, as you answer uh, questions along those, those lines. And then I guess the, the last thing that I will uh, 
and uh, of course, Aaron talked already about the webhook. So uh, the feature reports, we don't have any specific plans for incorporating that directly uh, into forms. That's really sort of a separate aspect of, of the platform, uh, not necessarily directly related to forms, although obviously the information that's generated from there is often used uh, within those forms and those reports. Thanks, Doug. All right, and our next question is for Aaron. Is it possible to bring over a previously made form in Survey123 to field map smart forms? Um, so the short answer is no. Um, there are two different specifications. So the smart RGS smart forms are stored in the web map today in the web map specification, which is JSON. And the Survey123 forms that you typically author use the um, XLS form specs. They're kind of two separate things. Um, it may be possible to write a script to do some type of conversion, but we haven't done that and it wouldn't really be supported. Thanks, Aaron. All right, the next question is also for you. Um, is there a way to export or import forms? We have lost multiple forms due to users opening maps in the current web map viewer and would like a good way to back up a form. We also would like to copy a form to a new field map app to use with a different layer that shares the same schema. Uh, yeah, so there's kind of a few topics wrapped up in that question. So right off the bat, um, can you export forms? And the answer really is no right now. We have had this requirement come up before and it's something we might consider in the future, allowing you to export and then import. Um, we are also looking into, instead of saving the form into the map, providing also providing the option to save the form onto the layer item. Um, so this would give you the opportunity to define the form once per layer. And then if you use that layer in multiple maps, you don't have to rebuild the form for each map. Um, and then kind of related to this is uh, the field maps web app and other areas of ArcGIS Online and, and enterprise support saving copies of maps. Um, so that's kind of one way that you could, you could think of kind of exporting your, your form today. Thanks, Erin. All right, we've got one for Doug. Is it possible to set today as default for a date field? It's a, it currently, no, but uh, we talked a little bit about support for calculated fields, and this is one area where we expect that uh, we might be able to satisfy that requirement by allowing you to define that on the form uh, as to use the, the current date and time if, if that was what you wanted, just to minimize the need for direct data entry there. Thanks, Doug. The next one is for you as well. Uh, when do you plan to release capabilities like calculate, contingent values, et cetera? So that's uh, you know a, a multifaceted question uh, in terms of the the calculated values. As I said, that is something we're actively researching and working on uh, today internally within the development teams. But uh, there are contingent values is continuing to move forward as uh, in the next uh, ArcGIS Online release. Uh, support for contingent values is is starting to to roll out. Um, but we do need to continue to work with other parts of the platform to make those come to life in field maps, such as uh, the ArcGIS runtime SDKs. Um, and that is on, on the roadmap, but we don't have a defined timeframe of when those will be available. All right, thanks, Doug. And I can answer the next question, which is, can you make attachments like photos required? And you can at the moment, but it is on our roadmap. So that will be coming soon. Um, and then the next question is, are dynamic dropdown lists already in? If not, when are they coming? Binding a dropdown to a table or service would be really useful. Uh, Aaron or Doug, would one of you like to take that one? I can take that, I guess. Um, so we kind of refer to dynamic dropdowns, I guess, as contingent values. Doug touched on this a little bit. So there's currently support in enterprise feature services and support in ArcGIS Online is coming later this year. Um, so we do have plans to kind of honor those defined settings that you could do um, when you author a feature layer in ArcGIS Pro. Um, so that, that's coming. Um, yeah. Thanks. And then the next one is, do we need to use the new map viewer in order to use field maps? Yeah, I can answer this one too. Um, this is a kind of loaded question, to be honest. So uh, if you are, if you have existing maps and you're not authoring new forms in them, you can use continue to use the classic uh, map viewer today without any issues. 
if you start defining forms like we've showed in the, in the demos today, you do need to then use the new map viewer, uh, which currently is in beta, but will be out of beta next week with the ArcGIS Online release. Um, and so once you've kind of added a form or configured some other, other things using the new map viewer app, you kind of need to continue to use that new map viewer app. Uh, if you don't, and you go back to using the classic map viewer, um, there's, it's, there's a lot of potential for you to lose your forms that you've created. Um, so we really do not recommend using that because um, there's a lot of risk involved there. Thanks, Aaron. I also want to take a moment to note that we're going to have a blog post coming out by Josh Clifford and Jeff Shaner alongside that ArcGIS Online release next week that'll talk a little bit more about when to use which map viewer because we want to make sure um, all that information is captured there for you. Uh, the next question is, can you do nested groups or group within a group? And I'll take this one. Um, it's not currently supported and we don't have any plans for it at this time. However, if you're interested in this, please submit it to ArcGIS Ideas on our Ideas website. So that way the team can um, take a look and see if we can implement it for you. Then our next question is, can the form fields be populated from an existing feature service? Doug or Aaron? So, so that one, uh, in terms of the, the form fields, if we're thinking about default fields, of course, uh, if those default fields values are defined in the feature service, we will use those with a, the templates. Uh, so the templates are another place to define those values. Uh, I'm not 100% sure exactly what this question uh, is going, that specific level of detail though. Uh, Aaron, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, not really. All right, well, if you need more detail than that, please go ahead over to the Ask Our Expert Showcase under Field Apps and uh, give us a little more information and we'll be happy to answer. The next question is also for Doug, and that is, can an address slash location attribute be populated based on where the point is added in field maps, similar to the smart editor widget in Web App Builder that can use a geocoder to populate the address? Yeah, th so this is, is falling in line with some of the other uh, asks around uh, calculated fields. So uh, for an address field, for example, you know, we are looking at offering the ability to define, uh, be, to be able to use a reverse geocoded uh, expression to calculate that value. Now, of course, uh, when we're thinking about working offline, that may or may not be available. Uh, so that is something that, that we are thinking through. Uh, but if, if you've got use cases or, or requirements there, we'd certainly I'd like to hear from you on that. Okay. Thanks, Doug. And the next one is for you as well. It's a Doug streak. So the next one is, do we need to author our entire web map from start to finish in the field maps web app for smart forms to work? So uh, the short answer is, is no. And, and Aaron touched on, on sort of the, the differences between the, the classic map viewer and the new map viewer. But we certainly expect uh, for authoring many aspects of your, of your map, the read-only pop-up, for example, or uh, your renderers, that's going to be done within the map viewer. And then other aspects like your forms, your templates, uh, your offline settings, the deployment uh, and sharing that out to your field workforce, that's something that we expect that you would do uh, in field map. So they are meant to be complementary um, in, that, in that regard. Thanks, Doug. And the next one is also for you. Uh, is there any capability to calculate values using the spatial relationship of other features in the map? For example, a hydrant inspection is collected within a census tract polygon. Could the census tract ID value come over and populate a field in the hydrant layer? Yeah, uh, so continuing on the popular theme of uh, looking for, for field calculations. So we, we are uh, sort of looking at, just to dive into that a little bit, we are looking at sort of two different aspects around field calculations. Um, the first is sort of uh, doing that within, within a feature. So based on other information that's been computed uh, or entered already, being able to compute those and, and populate those values. But there are uh, also the option to be able to use other information in the map. Um, Recently, uh, last fall, when we first released ArcGIS Field Maps, we added support for Arcade Feature Sets, uh, which allows you to query other layers in the map or in the portal. Um, and that works online and offline with a few limitations, obviously, if, if the data is not on the device. Um, those capabilities are also things that we expect to extend 
to support for field calculation, not just viewing uh, fields within the read-only pop-up. Thanks, Doug. Next one's for Aaron. Can I create a smart form for a feature service that is part of an active survey one, two, three form that is also in use? Will its use in ArcGIS field maps disrupt or break my survey one, two, three workflow? Basically, I want to include the feature service in both survey one, two, three and field maps using smart forms. Um, yeah, so because the new ArcGIS smart forms capabilities uh, work on any hosted feature or any, any feature layer, um, there's really no reason that you couldn't uh, use uh, ArcGIS form on top of uh, a layer published from Survey123. Um, I can't really comment on if it would break your workflow. It kind of depends what your workflow is, I think. Um, for example, if you were using webhooks, those are those are not triggered on the back end in Survey123. So any data coming in from field maps in this case wouldn't, wouldn't flow through those pipelines. Thanks, Aaron. Next one is also for you. Are you able to add additional form fields that are not part of the selected layer for inspection? Uh, this is a great question. So currently you cannot. Today you can only uh, add form elements for existing fields. However, we're kind of uh, doing some research and development right now. And hopefully later this year, you will be able to essentially build uh, a form from scratch, including adding layers or adding fields to the layer along with the various form elements. Great, thank you, Aaron. The next one's also for you. Can you set default values to fields? Uh, yes, so this is kind of, if you've noticed in the web app, there's two, there's two kind of tabs. There's a templates tab and a form tab. Um, so the way Collector and ArcGIS field maps work is they use templates uh, to define default values. Um, so they're not actually part of the form specification, but you can set default values using types and templates like you can for Collector today. Great. And we've got another one for you. Uh, when will a new build be available for install for Enterprise 1081 to match with the new ArcGIS Online release next week? This is a, this is a good question. So uh, the release that we did for the Field Maps web app for 1081 is a kind of one-off release for 1081. Um, moving forward, ArcGIS Field Maps web is included with ArcGIS Enterprise, and there are no plans to do backports to older versions of Enterprise. And this is kind of in line with how the rest of the ArcGIS Enterprise uh, system works in general. So if you want to use new capabilities, you would need to upgrade ArcGIS Enterprise. It's kind of a short story to that. Thanks, Aaron. All right, a question for Doug. Can you update related data in the form? So uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of ambiguity to this question, so I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to answer. So. In terms of the related data, of course, forms, as Aaron showed in his demonstration, can be applied to related data. Um, so uh, related tables, related feature layers uh, defined in the, in the information model. But you also, you know, there is also the angle of, can I include related data in terms of my form itself? Um, when I'm filling that out, sort of uh, that, that are related Right now, you, you can't, that is something that we're looking at. We, in, in one of the poll questions we asked about uh, inline related records uh, where you could in, embed the uh, related form or, or entry into the, into the parent form. That is something that we are looking at supporting here in, in the future. Thanks, Doug. Next question is for Aaron. The demos have only shown smart forms working with point data collection. Can you collect lines and polygons using smart forms? Uh, yep, yeah, you, so we generally demo with point data because it's easier, uh, but it works with lines and polygons as well. Thanks, Aaron. All right, the next question. We have a workflow that uses Survey123 to edit a feature service while also tracking and quick capture. Will the smart forms and field maps ever be able to consolidate some of these functions into a single app? I'm primarily interested in choose multiple questions and feature reports. And Doug or Aaron, whichever of you wants to take this one. Uh, I can I can I can start and Aaron chime in here. Uh, in terms of it's sort of the latter half of that question, um, we we are looking at uh, supporting multiple questions right now. We don't have any plans to do that, but the from the poll results, that's uh, overwhelmingly the, the most popular request. Uh, so that is something that, that we have been discussing internally, but we don't have any specific timeline for or plans for at this point. Um, in terms of the, 
the other aspects around the feature reports, again, I think the feature reports are, are a bit orthogonal uh, to that. Aaron, did you want to talk at all about the tracking side? Um, yeah. So currently in the field maps uh, mobile app, you can use location tracking just like you can in ArcGIS Tracker. There's pretty much full parity between both apps. Uh, and we're also planning to add additional settings uh, this coming quarter to kind of require tracking when you open a map. Um, so that might uh, meet those use cases as well. Thanks, Doug and Aaron. The next question is for Aaron. Um, I noticed that you can only edit maps owned by you in field maps. One thing we commonly do is edit other maps in the organization for use in Collector. Will it ever be possible to view or edit maps from your entire organization in the field maps web application? Uh, this is a good question. We've heard this feedback quite a bit. And uh, luckily, the next release of uh, the web app next week will actually support uh, allowing administrators to edit any map in the organization. Great. And we just have a few minutes left, so I want to reiterate, head over to the Ask Our Experts Showcase area. If any of your questions have gone unanswered, we'd be happy to chat with you there. Um, get a few more questions in here. So the next one is for Aaron as well. Can you save conditional visibility arcade expressions to the, oh, it moved, <laughs> there we go, to the project so they can be used on different layers within the project? For instance, if you have multiple views of the same data set within one project, so currently, it's kind of a one-to-one -one relationship between a, an arcade expression used for condition of visibility and the form element that it applies to. But we're looking at expanding this to support some level of reusability for the arcade expressions. It's not going to go to uh, the full map level at this time, but that's something we, we could consider uh, in the longer term, I think. Thanks, Aaron. Um, next one's for Doug. Will we need to reconfigure our field map settings after Map Viewer Beta is released for full release, non-beta in the upcoming weeks? I.e., if we've already pushed a field map solution to production using Map Viewer Beta, what we need to redo after Map Viewer Beta is out of beta? Uh, so the short answer to that is no. Um, you know, there are, your existing solutions will continue to work uh, as as they have been, hopefully, uh, well as they have been. Uh, at the ones you've already deployed. In terms of the, the, the map your beta moving to out of beta, you know, really it doesn't have uh, an impact in terms of the, the way that data is persisted. Um, really, it's just an additional set of capabilities that are continually becoming uh, that were previously only supported in the, in the classic map viewer. So yeah, so no change is required until you're ready to take advantage of those new ones that are available in the map viewer. Thanks, Doug. And we've got another question for you, which is, will you be expanding smart forms to eventually do what Survey123 Connect does now? So in terms of the, the broad functionality, uh, again, as, as we talked about, you know, Survey123 and Survey123 Connect support the XLS form spec. And that's a very broad spe specification. That's an open standard. Um, we don't expect to support all of those capabilities unless customers are asking us for those specifically. So, you know, we're looking to target the most popular capabilities, uh, independent of whether they're supported in XLS forms or whether they're supported uh, elsewhere or, or new capabilities, but not necessarily looking to do a replacement there. Great, thanks, Doug. And in the last minute, I can answer the last question that's at the top of the votes, which is, does a field need to be set as required in the data schema prior to being used in field maps, or is that checkbox enforced only in the app? Um, the field does not need to be set as required in the data schema. The required checkbox is used in the app, and it requires the person filling out the form to go ahead and include any required information before they can submit the form. Um, the required checkbox is form specific, so you can require that field in one form, but not require it in another. And with that, I, that's all the time we have. Thanks for joining us here today in our Q&A. And again, take any questions that we weren't able to answer over to the Ask Our Expert Showcase to the Field App section. We'd be happy to continue the conversation there. Thank you.